Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, this is a bit of a different video than I normally do. Is Astro too complex? Well, that's a question that I think we need to start asking and my answer overall will be no, but I'm gonna talk through some reasons at the end why I think it could get too complex if they're not careful. So to start with, why are they not too complex? Well, first of all, it's because they have simple defaults. That's everything from SSG mode by default to page routing instead of a config router to allowing you to just add anything inside of this pages directory that's a markdown file or an astro file, and it just works and creates a route for you. So those are some of the simple defaults. And on top of that, there are only a few directories that are actually reserved. The pages directory is, content and actions if you use content collections and astro actions. The rest of these things like layouts and components and styles, those are all just conventions. You can name it that way to keep stuff organized, but you don't have to do it in a particular way. You've got freedom to kind of use what you want. So that's the very first thing, and that is that they're simple defaults. All right, secondly, you have a separation of concerns and runtime. So you know where stuff is always gonna be run. Now I've got this components doc open, and if you're familiar with Astro, you'll know that all the server side or build side code is done right here, and then all your output is done below it. So this little template block, this guard, lets you know exactly where stuff is being run. If you want to opt into client-side JavaScript, you know explicitly because you're marking it with a script tag, or if you're using some kind of UI directory, you're actually explicitly giving it like a client visible, like right here. Otherwise, you can wrap those things in script tags as well, and they'll run client-side. The rest of this, anything below these uh, three lines, it's always going to just be outputted as HTML. Now you do have like a JSX style templating for looping over things, but you don't have to have things like keys or some of the annoying things that come with React. And since a lot of people already know uh, React, JSX itself is a simple feature, right? When it comes to runtime, there is a simple like basic structure of concern. You've got just SSG to start with or SSR. Now with SSR, you can have individual routes be server-side rendered or individual routes be statically rendered and you just export const pre-render true or false for those if you're in SSR mode. What that does is it takes whatever default, if you're using server or uh, hybrid mode, which I've done videos on that, it'll basically just flip it. So if you're using server mode, everything will be server-side rendered by default and you can flip that on an individual route with const uh, export const pre-render equals. Uh, true. Same thing as opposite for hybrid where everything is statically rendered by default and you can enable it on a per route basis. But even there, you're explicitly marking out when it's rendered and when it's not rendered on the server. The third reason I think it's not too complex is they really do their best to stick to web standards by default. Perhaps one of the ways to point this out is to show something that they fixed. When they cert first set up endpoints, you can have these static endpoints like this, where you can hit this get request, or if you're in SSR mode, you can do post requests. But they used to have this just be lowercase get. Then they realized, you know what? The web standard is capital, so let's go ahead and do that. So that's the case all throughout here. And that just shows one of the ways, a very small way, mind you, that they try to stick to web standards whenever they can. That's the case when it comes to the response. So you have to return an actual new response. You can't just like return true or something like that. You have to actually return a response like you would expect using the web itself, right? The web framework. All right, number four, there's a lot of niceties, but those niceties are just progressive enhancements. So for instance, if I jump over here to view transitions right here, you don't have to use view transitions. And in fact, if a browser doesn't support it, it just routes it to that page like normal. So these are progressive enhancements, the kinds of things that they're adding, rather than like wholesale replacements for an entire section of the app. So you're not having to use these, but if you want a better DX in some cases, or if you want a better client-side experience in other cases, you can opt into these, but again, the defaults are very simple. So view transitions is one of those. And even here to mention for my last point, they're trying to stick with the web defaults. So they built it in such a way that once browsers finally support this, which just now Chrome is officially, you don't have to include this anymore. You can just use the one built into the browser and no JavaScript at all is required on your site. Now this is the same when it comes to asset handling. So if you wanna use images, you can do that. So let's come over here. Let me find some images right over here. So here you can use images and you can use their uh, like Im image syntax right here, this image component. There's also a picture component as well. You can use both of those and all they do is enhance the default experience. If you don't wanna use that, that's fine. You might not have as optimized images for your clients or you might wanna just pull in from CDN instead and not even worry about the picture tag or the image tag. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, they're just progressive enhancements beyond what, kind of the, the web defaults. Same thing when it comes to uh, Astro Actions as well. I won't go through each of these docs here, but instead of using a standard post endpoint, you can actually grab all the stuff coming in from a form, for instance, and check it using Zod. It validates it, so you don't have to write all that yourself. And even with these progressive enhancements, not only are they progressive, sometimes they actually make the web defaults simpler. 
So in that case, you write much less code and you get a better result. Now, final reason is that these integrations, which are a lot of the things that kind of feel like they make Astro more complex, they're all opt-in. So whether it's a UI framework or some, some kind of SSR adapter or other integrations like MarkDoc or AstroDB or PartyTown or Sitemaps, those are all opt-in. You don't have to include those. And when you do include them, it's really nice and easy to get started because the Astro CLI is so good. So I think Astro is not too complex yet, but there are some warning signs that I think you just we need to be careful as they continue to build this out. Number one, I think if they start to mess around with a lot of the routing configuration, I already mentioned, I think one of the reasons it's easy is because it's all page routing by default. However, they may want to change that. And if they do and start making it config based as the default or add some more complexities there, I think that would be difficult for people to get started with. Similar to what like Next did when they changed from like the pages route to the app route, some of those things really mess with people and require a lot of restructuring. And I think that's one of the things that people don't like. And a lot of times that's one of the things people tag as being complex, where really it's just like making you redo everything. I think the second thing is if they mess up the clarity around runtimes. Now, like I mentioned, they have it pretty clear for the most part. You have to mark pre-render equals true. But if I go ahead and pull over here, let's look at the Astro Actions. And I come inside here, this Astro Actions file can only be used in SSR mode. Here, however, they don't make you mark it as pre-render equals true. And I personally think that's a, like an error on their part. Because here, this is only ever going to be run server side, but you don't actually have to mark it that way. So I think for me, to really keep the separation of concerns, they should either automatically do that for you, or at least remind you in the file, like with some kind of error note, hey, you need to make sure you add this. And that way, it's really clear. Each individual file, is this running on the server? Is it running on the client? Now, especially if they start to move towards some kind of CSR story, some kind of client-side render story for sections, I think it's going to be really important. And I don't know that they're doing that, but there's been some rumblings that they might try to come up with a CSR story. If they do that, I think it's going to be really important that they make sure they keep the separation of concerns clear with server um, components uh, in Next and, and React. For instance, that's the world kind of I'm in. I think that's one of the things that's really confused things and you're never quite sure what's safe and what's not safe. So, so far I think they're simple, but I think there are some foot guns they could run into here. And paying attention to the way people have responded to things like the fast development of Next, I think is a really helpful thing for the Astro team. Now, one thing that encourages me is even when they're adding new things, like I said, they're progressive enhancements, they don't replace everything. And they're sticking to those web standards even when it comes to that. And when they make an error, they quickly adapt it. The other thing is I've had Astro sites now for two or three years that I've only ever made like very incremental small updates in spite, of, in spite of the fact that it's been sometimes years between like when I first built it and when I'm changing to the latest uh, features. Nothing really breaks because again, they're just adding these progressive enhancements. So those are my thoughts on whether or not Astro is too complex. And uh, I'd be interested in what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.